Hello, this is Jonathan, otherwise known as Senor Smoke here at Curtos in Westchester County. Today I am broadcasting from Casa de Smoke outside. Beautiful, beautiful fall day here in Westchester County. And I've got my new little friend behind me over here, the Primo. Um, more on that later though. Today we're not talking about ceramic smokers, cookers, grills. We're talking about an outdoor kitchen, an outdoor kitchen that we just completed in Scarsdale, New York. And um, as I started this other series of uh, blog posts or video blog posts where I will take an outdoor kitchen and kind of analyze it, break it down all for the benefit of you, the viewer, so you can kind of take some, uh, some of this information and use it to plan your own space or maybe get inspired, get some ideas down the road. Um, this particular kitchen um, was very modest in terms of size and in terms of um, uh, the amount of product that was in it. And this is a beautiful, uh, very clear and beautiful example of that you don't need to go crazy with these um, islands. But you can some, sometimes being simple is definitely the best way to go. So let's get into the logic as to why um, the, uh, the island was built the way it was, why the products were selected, um, and why we, they went with so few. Um, the island is basically about 9 to 10 feet long. It's a straight line. There's no L and no U. And um, they used a granite top and they used natural stone that is not a veneer. And it's made out of block. So the reason why, and this guy is a big time cook, um, big time griller, but he did not want to go wild with the size of the island or the amount of products because of the proximity of the island to his existing kitchen. And he has some pretty wild appliances in there. So um, a lot of refrigeration modules. So he, that was the first thing he decided. He didn't need um, refrigeration out here, whether that was drawers, regular fridge, 24 inches, um, uh, or the big alfresco 28 um, did not need an ice maker I mean he was close enough to the kitchen for all that for him the important thing was he wanted a big grill with a lot of different features on and that's all he went with alfresco um, he wanted some type of storage and access to the gas and then he also wanted trash all right so again when you look at the countertop over here there's no other cooking devices there's no power cooker there's no side burner there's no built-in smoker everything that he needed was encased within that 42 inch alfresco so let's talk about the appliances or the grill materials let's talk about the uh, the grilling products um, that's a 42 inch alfresco that's an alxe 42 um, there is no sear burner in this one um, eventually he will probably buy a solid fuel insert so he can cook with some wooden charcoal um, he was very interested in the rotisserie the integrated rotisserie that the alfresco offers it is the best rotisserie system out of all the premium gas grills um, uh, so we got a 42 inch alfresco again nothing on the side no versa power cooker no side burner no need for it close enough to the kitchen that he could use his capital range that he has in there um, if need be uh, so the 42 was fine and when we went below instead of doing um, the alfresco access doors or the alfresco dry storage pantry he wanted to conserve some dough all right so what he did and this is something that i saw as a somewhat of a trend in 2016 was still somewhat relevant in 2017 is people going wild with the cooking products and the refrigeration but stepping down in terms of the access doors and the storage and what we were doing is we were putting people into blaze under counter um, in this case he has uh, the blaze 39 inch uh, door and drawer combo so you have three drawers on the left for storage of tools and things like that and on the right he has access to the gas um, that is a 39 inch module very very popular and on the, to the right of that, he has the, uh, the Blaze uh, pull-out trash drawer. Now, the reason why we were putting people into the Blaze under counter is that that is actually manufactured. You know, unlike the Blaze grills, which are, which are sourced overseas, um, their under counter products are all made in California. And we found that the quality of them, they're, 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 they're quite good for the money. Uh, the same thing goes for the carts that a lot of the Blaze products, especially the Blaze Pro product, a grill goes on the cart is fantastic. I think it's actually a better cart than most of the carts you're gonna see in, uh, that the Pro grills use. 
um, uh, and the ones that are made in the United States. So we have, for several years now, we've been telling customers, if you wanted to kind of go down price with some components of the island, go with the Blaze products for underneath, and we haven't had any issues. If things came in damage, they got replaced pretty easily, um, and they've held up. That's the most important thing. You know, a few winters into it now, nobody's calling me up saying, Jonathan, things are rusting out, doors are falling off the hinges, the ball bearings and the drawers are shot to shit. I mean, none of that stuff is going on. So again, very confident, very happy with the Blaze under counter if you want to save some money. Now, that's not to say they can compare with the Alfresco or even the DCS under counter, who, which, I mean, it's just made with thicker grades of stainless uh, the ball bearings are better certainly on the alfresco um, um the alfresco dry storage pantry to me is absolutely there's nothing like it in the business um but in any case if you want to save some money you can do an under counter a solution from some other brands blaze in particular now let's go spin to the other side of the island because this is actually something very important you'll notice two vents over there okay those are island vents and the reason that we use those in our outdoor kitchens or we highly highly recommend them to the builder if we're not building it ourselves is that um what will happen is if you go to the grill and try to ignite it okay and this is whether you have propane or whether you have natural gas um if you try to ignite it and nothing is it's not it's not igniting what's happening the gas is coming out and you have the potential if you keep doing it that the gas is going to start to accrue underneath the grill and that if you stop and then you go back to ignite it again there could be a spark and you could have a situation where all that gas that's basically hanging out in the island um, you could get to a combustible situation which means danger okay so what the island vents do is they create some airflow um, so that 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 pooling gas is not going to happen so it's a safety feature it's something that a lot of people don't talk about but again in all the islands we are involved with that we have our hands in we always recommend these to the user i don't think they're code um, they're actually they're not at least up here but again we strongly strongly recommend the usage they're 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 i mean they're like 25 30 dollars for each vent we always do recommend going one high, doing one high and doing one low uh, because propane and natural gas, one's heavier than the other one. Um, and uh, it's it just as things can start to, again, pool, uh, it could potentially rise, it could sink. So um, get two of them, put them high, put them low, and you're good to go. So just by looking at this island again, it's beautiful and it's simple. And that's the whole thing that I'm trying to get across over here is that you don't need to make this U-shaped, L-shaped, just, you know, I don't want to say a monstrosity, but you don't need to recreate a literal, um, you know, 20 by 25 foot per with a pergola over it and a TV. I mean, it's great. We love to get involved with those. But sometimes simplicity is best. And that's what went out over here, again, because of the island's proximity to the home. Um, uh, what, what else could I say? I mean, the guy did a killer job on it. I love the sleekness. It actually blends in well with his kitchen, which is it's a very, it's, it's somewhat of a modern home. So I, I love the sleekness, love the black granite. Um, they did a killer job. Kudos to you, Mr. Evan. You're going to be enjoying this. So that's about it. If there are any questions about your outdoor kitchen build out, your potential outdoor kitchen build out, your future plans, please hit me up, Jonathan at curdos.com. Come visit the showroom. We are 20 minutes north of Manhattan, 20 minutes north of Bergen County, half an hour from Fairfield County, and all points in Westchester converge in Yonkers. So come see us on beautiful in beautiful and bucolic Central Avenue. Um, Jonathan at curdos.com again, please. I love talking outdoor kitchens. Uh, we'd love to be involved with yours. So, uh, and remember, oh, aside from the outdoor kitchens, the grills, the alfresco, the DCS, everything else that we roll with, smokers, ceramic smokers, pellet smokers, we ship across the country. Free shipping. Call me, talk to me about it. Thank you very much for your time.